And it's not to realize that play is not a secondary, connection is not a secondary need. It's a primary need, primary to our growth, to our health. And here's the challenge that I want to throw out to you all is we're not connecting very well. We got a loneliness epidemic, epidemic. The Surgeon General called it a health epidemic that is more deadly than smoking. We need to connect. The quality of each of our lives is in direct proportion to the quality of our relationships. And we have what a friend of mine, Alex Banyan, called isolation technologies. They're booming. I like them. They're convenient. Grubhub, bring over something to eat, Instacart, grab your groceries, hop on a Peloton, do a workout, don't need to look at anybody, just go to Facebook, do whatever, send a tweet if I got something to say, want to watch a movie, just put on my headphones, sit back and watch a ton of Netflix. But it's costing us. It's costing us. So the first thing, first piece of advice to succeed in the life-changing relationship business, inconvenience yourself to connect with warm, loving, non-judgmental connections. It just takes a second, Steve. The difference between just grabbing your coffee and saying like, thank you very much, appreciate it. How's your day going? Awesome, thank you. And freaking meaning it. Meaning it that somebody got out of bed to give you your cup of coffee. So that's the first thing, back to Salbona. Make sense? All right, cool. Piece number two, find your why. Why bother? I'm gonna ground us in a piece of reality that maybe most people don't say a great wolf lodge. Y'all ready? We're all gonna die. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to be a bummer if that's a bummer to y'all, but no matter, like over time, as my dad reminded us, the death rate has remained one per person. No matter how much we evolve, we know how this freaking thing ends. I remember my dad, this is my dad right here. And, and thank you, dad, love that guy. So, <laughs> my dad was funny, like, my dad passed away a few years ago, and I remember one time we were at a funeral together when he was like probably 86, and, the people were leaving, everyone was leaving, and the guy who ran the funeral home was like, okay, see you later. My father said to him, I'll tell you something, at my age, it's hardly worth going home. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but he once said to me, and that's how he talked too, by the way, and I love to imitate him, not to make fun of him, but just it makes me feel like he's here with me. Um, I remember a while back, he said to me, like, Steve, if you think about it, you know, life is kind of like a terminal illness. And I was like, how so, Dad? And he's like, well, I mean, eventually we find out we're going to die. And not only that, but everyone we know and love is going to die. And I remember thinking at the time, like, Dad, I'm freaking eight. Can we play catch <laughs> or something? Dog, I mean, serious. But no, he, in seriousness, he used to always say, this was his thing, his spiritual endeavor was, you know what? I, we have no control over being born. Nobody here chose to be born. We just were born. By the way, some people say it's an absolute miracle, like the odds are one in several trillion that somehow we got born right now. It's amazing. But didn't say it's easy and we didn't ask for it. The other thing is most of us don't have a choice that one day we're not going to be here anymore. And my father said, I don't understand that. I had no control over my birth. I have no control over the fact that one day I'm going to die. But there is one thing I have control over. Making somebody else's journey from birth to death better because I was there to help along the way. 